What's up guys, Guillaume here and welcome back to Pro Cycle 2021 with another episode of our Pro Cyclist series and if you've made the previous episode then do go ahead and do so as we started the Giro d'Italia, our first ever Grand Tour and it is, or it has been actually, quite a, quite a successful uh, first week in, in Italy uh, because after seven stages we are not only leading the GC but we've also um, won three stages uh, so that's quite good Today's episode should be somewhat rapid, uh, we'll do, uh, well I mean, about 7 stages most likely, starting with the Rieti Arezzo, then Arezzo Montecatini Terme, Montecatini Terme Faenza, Faenza San Dona di Piave, then uh, the crucial stage of the episode will be between San Dona di Piave and the Monte Zoncolan, followed by Pordenone Marostica, and we'll wrap it up with Marostica Alpe di Pampeago. Um, so yeah, hopefully things do go our way. We have four sprint stages coming up in the episode, so we should be somewhat shit for most of the episode. And to kickstart uh, things off, we've got a sprint stage today. Uh, it's gonna be a plus three for us, though we won't be uh, doing anything with uh, six nine sprinting. Maybe try to do something for Jacomo Nizolo, our uh, resident sprinter. Uh, there is a downhill portion towards the end um, in the final seven kilometers of the stage. Um, but yeah, if we were to resume the first week to two names, those would be quite easy. Obviously, we have me, um, I mean, first of the GC, first in Mountain, first in the Bet Youth classification, and three stages, but I'm not the only one who got three stages because there's only been three winners in the first week of the Giro d'Italia. Uh, I believe the, the, the third winner was Davide Ballerini from the Conant, but then first pink jersey and three-time stage winner, Avazbek Sinerobov is uh, still here and he's looking to probably add yet another bag to, um, to his Giro Tally. Can the Kazakh rider for Rally Cycling and Invited team get us a fourth win? I mean, I think he potentially can, yeah. And uh, with just short of 20 kilometers, we uh, came back at the breakaway as Filippo Ganna just crashed. Uh, that's that's a big bummer for uh, for Ineos. Hopefully he will. I mean he's already back on his bike. He's already going at it. So that's fine for Ineos. Um, but yeah, Nizor is a nice position. Um, we've got this slight hill right now coming up. Um, and then as I said, downhill portion towards the finish in Arezzo. Uh, I don't exactly know what to do right now. We've entered the final five kilometers. Um, I've got Lutsenko to like launch my sprint just just in case because you know what it's gonna be funny. Uh, Nizolo is in great position. Nizolo is literally in P4 of the peloton right now. I'm gonna try not to block him because uh, that would be quite quite stupid. Uh, but Lutsenko has led uh, or has started his effort. 1.3k to go. I'm gonna go now, uh, and the win will be for Fabio Jakobsen. Unless Muschetti, nope, nope. Fabio Jakobsen is a fourth winner on this Giro d'Italia. Nizolo on the podium at least. Uh, Sinelo P5. Are we gonna be top 10 at least? Yeah, we are. P7. It's plus five today. Sadly, it's a sprint stage and quite a, a radio stage I won't be able to do anything on. Um, so, so yeah, see you for the sprint. And there's been a crash involving Wilco Kelderman, uh, but also Gorka Zagiri and most notably Jonas Ricard from uh, Alpesin, who was saying goodbye to uh, this Giro d'Italia. Um, has there been any more withdrawals since the last time I've checked? Uh, I believe last time there was like four, five. Oh god, there has been more. Um, actually, wait. I think no, only Arm Van Luka might have been uh, added to that list. I remember Jungles. I think Graf Anderson might be uh, one of the new riders. Um, but there's been another crash right here. Uh, Marones is fourth. Jakobsen, Vlasov. Vlasov is down. Vlasov is down alongside Fabio Jakobsen. Hopefully not too much of an issue for, uh, for the two of them. New venue is Van Hoedonk. A lot of riders crashing, actually. Um, in this false flat, um, downhill false flat, to be exact. Okay, well, hopefully not, uh, not more withdrawals. Uh, the, the race is already easy enough for, uh, for us. If, if you take away Vlasov or Jakobsen, I'm gonna, like, I'm, I'm gonna suspect that the game is, uh, is nicing me. Armirai also crashing. Joe Timms is currently crying. And Joe Timms is actually in tears as Bruno Armirai withdraws from the Giro d'Italia. Why is everyone crashing so badly? My, my coefficient crash, or like my crash coefficient, sorry, is like 1. Fortunato, Zakharov crashing as well. Work pulse. What's going on? There is work pulse actually. He's crashed with a rider from um, I don't know who, maybe back exchange. I don't. I, I only saw one bike on the ground or two bikes, but one rider. Um, but we've we've done the downhill portion. No one else in my team has crashed apart from Gorka Zagiri. It's a withdrawal for Dan Mackley. 
That's three withdrawals in one downhill portion. And I'm pretty sure I just saw Miguel Angel Lopez uh, crashing as well. Let me just go back to the events. Uh, he has indeed. Web Pulse has abandoned as well. What the fuck is happening in that stage? I don't know. Uh, but we still have a group of 21 riders aiming to come back. I believe that's the group Jakobsen and Vlasov. It is indeed. It is indeed the group of Jakobsen and Vlasov. Um, Vlasov, who was 10th this morning in the GC, is at the top start of the year. I mean, there was one mountain stage and he choked on it. Um, but he could have potentially tried to uh, come back on the likes of Ruben Fernandez. Matteo Favreau or even Peyo Bilbao later on in the Giro uh, but it looks like he may be adding another 2 minutes to um, his gap comes the end of the stage 5k to go, Mauro Schmidt leading away the peloton, Lutzenko in the wheel and then myself um, we'll, uh, we'll ask Alexei to transcend himself as soon as the sprint begins uh, James, why are you here? don't know, ah for water I'm guessing, yeah okay he was there for water purposes uh, that was right I I told you to transcend him, to transcend yourself, and what did you do? You stopped. Oh, Alexei, you dumb, dumb man. 1k to go, though. We're going to start our sprint. We won't win, let's be honest. We will not be winning today. Don't tell me that the winner is going to be Olaf Koy. No, it's Jasper Philipson, ahead of Bonifazio, Koy, Alvaro Hood, Alvaro Hood, and myself in P5, Sinelov in P7. Uh, we've had two winners in two stages. What's happening on this year? What, what is all of this diversity? I'm not a fan of it. I mean cycling wise. And as I said, four withdrawals today, Amirai, Paul Smuckley, and Ricard. Um, gaps wise, uh, Vlasov, 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 I mean, uh, uh, Miguel Lopez, Richie Paul, I'm guessing, yeah, Vlasov is there as well. So they've lost two minutes and one second, which is basically more than they've lost on the mountain stage. Good. All right, we have the first hilly stage on this Giro, uh, well, I mean, on this episode. Um, but it should not be a, a finish that really suits me. We'll see how the stage unfolds, uh, if there's a few attacks here and there, then why not try to react to them? Um, but let's be honest, I expect things to uh, end up in a sprint of a tight group, maybe 30, 40 riders, or even to have a breakaway winning, uh, which is why Lorenzo Fortunato, who crashed yesterday, is now in the breakaway. He finished four minutes last. Can he finish on the podium? Alright, so now the stage um, is quite... Um, I don't know if I want to say interesting, because I expected the big teams to base in true PCM manner, you know, as soon as there's a climb, you go 99 and inshallah, uh, but they haven't, they haven't, oddly enough, however, they've been keeping the breakaway at bay, uh, we've had just a steady rhythm, uh, or a constant rhythm, sorry, throughout the entire stage so far, um, and it led to me not being very well placed as well, as we start the uh, Valicola Valletta. So, yeah, I don't exactly know what to do here. I'm gonna sneak to make sure I don't get blocked here by anyone. Uh, the likes of Vlasov and Joel Almeida mainly. Um, but I don't know if I need to like play this as if it's gonna be a, like a, a GC stage or if it's gonna be like a potential sprint. I don't know. It's it's tough. It's quite tough to predict here. Well, at least it appears that Fortunato keeps on attacking to get the mountain points. So I'm gonna guess that yesterday's crash for the Italian rider wasn't too bad. Um, I'm trying to keep as well the breakaway slightly at, a, at like an honest distance, uh, not too far, not too close, so that we could potentially try to aim for, uh, for a stage win later on. Uh, we've got a group of four uh, in front as um, Ivo Oliveira just got dropped. Uh, we've got Fortunato, Hamed Cueta, Larson and Alexander Catterford. 8k until the uh, final summit of the day and then it'll be a valley portion then downhill towards uh, the uh, great street of Faenza. Alright, I'm gonna try and um, take advantage of my, uh, my fitness peak. I don't know how long it's gonna last. It started on the day of the Giro and it lasts either like 14 to 17 or, or 17 to 21. I'm not so sure uh, what level of, uh, of fitness peak I currently have. So I figured I might as well try to do something. Um, we're in the tough portion, so I'm going to attack now. I'm going to attack right now. And then, I mean, it's going to be fun. Uh, it's like fun to play, fun, but probably like more enjoyable to watch. Um, so, yeah, let's just try to, uh, to hold on until the summit. We need to hold on for two kilometers. Uh, there's a group trying to come back, uh, led by Michal Kutkowski. Of course it is. Uh, wait, who's Michal pacing for? Is it Terra? Where is Terra? Am I done? What happened to I swear again out was like behind me in the mountain stage. Was I was I wrong? Did he did he choke? He lost to it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but we've got eight riders here. 
I mean, Mihai, if you want to keep pacing, then, then feel free to do so. Really, don't hesitate. There's three Neos, two tracks, and none of it is pacing. 7k to go, and there's an attack on the left here that would be Dan Martinez trying to come back on Fortunato and Juan Pablo Lopez. The track rider has attacked and bridged from uh, the peloton to the first group. Good move, very good move by, uh, by Lopez, uh, who's now pacing to prevent Kemna from coming back. I don't, I don't, actually, I don't exactly know. It's quite an, uh, an odd tactic to say the least. Uh, but I'm gonna back someone like Joao Almeida to, uh, to go for the win today. He's by far the fastest. Uh, let me just make sure what's his energy like. Yeah, he's got energy as well. Uh, I'm actually gonna try and jump in his wheel. 2.7k to go. Lenny Kemna is still sprinting. That's, that's really early, Maggi. That's really, really early. Um, shit, I've launched with 1.7. Well, that's, that's done. That right there. That was stupid. We're not gonna win. Uh, Ida Schelling? Ida Schelling for the dub? Ida Schelling for the dub! My voice cracked, but it's a win for Schelling ahead of Kudkowski and not myself, it's B4. Right, brilliant. Love that. I get another not podium. Fuck's sake. Uh, Paulus, Almeida, Cepeda, and Nairo Quintana's not here. Nairo Quintana is the big winner, uh, the big loser, sorry, of today's stage. He crosses the line 1 minute and 30 seconds behind Ida Schelling, the rider from AFC. It's a great win for Ida Schelling. Um, I should have won that had I not launched too early, but that was on me. Uh, GCY, as we said before, Quintana's the big loser. Um, but yeah, gap with Ferris and Joao Meda still unchanged as we head to another fucking sprint stage. Oh my god, this is so flat. Uh, Woohoo! It's, it's gonna be great. It's, I'm gonna love this stage. And so will you. Final 5k. Uh, we're obviously gonna go for yet another sprint. Um, I mean, I've had an unsuccessful start of this episode right now. And also, after three or four stages, there's been, I think, three or four different winners. Uh, which is a first in this Giro d'Italia. Uh, so if we could go back to uh, Iris Netov or whatever his name was, or even me winning, uh, I mean, it'd, it'd be a big, big job. Um, however, it will not be a big, big job for me today as it is gonna be. Sinerobov, you just have to ask. You just have to ask. Sinerobov wins ahead of Bonifazio and Philipson. We come home in P5. Um, where was I in the point classification? Seven points behind? All right, I'm going to be a bit more then. All right, well, Mont is on Colan time and we have a plus five. <sighs> come on. Now, this is the stage I'm winning today in the episode. That's the stage I bookmarked when I first take a look at the, uh, at the profile. Well, I mean, at the, the parkour. I love the fucking Mont Zone Colan. And I'm winning it, right? We've got a plus two on Izagire. We have a plus four, actually a plus three, sorry. On Marwa Schmidt. It's an L that we have a minus one on James Knox, but we don't need no James Knox today. We just need our two legs and our head and actually our entire body, uh, which would make it much easier for us to uh, actually be good. Is that? Oh, that's Fortune's okay. I thought that was uh, for a second that was Nielsen Paulus in the breakaway. And I would have been extremely scared. All right, we're going to start the first climb of the day. Uh, the climb of Fuerza, 11 kilometers, average of 5.7, knowing that there is, I mean, like a one and a half kilometer, actually a two, three kilometer? No, actually, yeah, 2.3 kilometer downhill, uh, and it's still 5.7%, so it's, it's a tough climb. Um, who's protecting me? Because everyone is like on automatic. Who the fuck is the one protecting me? No one. What is this? Where's Lutsenko? Alexei. Protect me, thank you. Gap is 240 with the breakaway break of seven riders. One rider has been dropped. Uh, that would be that would be Tiza in the break. Rubio, Edison, Talman, Nilans, Oliveira, and Simon Pedro. Huge crash, huge crash. Michal Kutkowski and Teo Gegenhardt have crashed as we are about to start the uh, Sela Valcava. The rhythm is extremely low by uh, Josep Cerny, so I'm gonna guess that um, the two riders from Ineos will come back. Gana has been waiting for them. Jai Hindley is also on the ground. Ben O'Connell is also on the ground. Um, Ida Schelling, who's won a couple of days ago, uh, was at least dropped. I don't think he's crashed. I don't think everyone in that group crashed because there's 56 riders. Uh, but I'm going to presume they'll make a nice comeback as Rodrigo Contreras takes the lead of the peloton. Um, we're doing well. We're doing well. We've got energy. We've got teammates. Um, and we have a breakaway. It's two minutes in the lead. And we're going to start. Dimonte Zoncolan. Very early on, Peyo Bilbao and Nero Quintana are going for a move. Uh, can I do anything or will I get blocked? I feel like I'm gonna get blocked. I will try either way. Uh, but Bilbao has gone Vlasov, Lopez, Kelderman maybe? Yep, Kelderman. Uh, Joao Almeida 
is taking the lead of the charge for some odd reason. Uh, why not? I mean, have fun at this point. 53 seconds is the gap for, uh, for Lopez and Vlasov. Actually, no, for Quintana and Bilbao. I love being blocked by everyone. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Um, oh, actually, I've got, I've got a nice rhythm here. I've got a nice rhythm. Let's attack. Let's attack in the tough portions of this Montezon Colan. Let's try to first come back on Lenny Kemna, who also has a plus 5 today. Nero Quintana has held on quite well in my wheel I'm surprised by that, but he's got like half the yellow I have with 6k to go. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, I'll just space, I guess, for now. Uh, how's Joao looking? Everyone's looking very ropes compared to me here. I might be winning the Giro today. We're going to increase the rhythm a bit more. Let's another attack. Just to see, just to see if anyone is willing to just use all of their strength to try and come back for now. The answer appears to be no. Look at the slopes. Look at the slopes. 13%, 19% actually for us now. As we approach the final four kilometers, I'm going to reduce my rhythm just a tad. See uh, how things are looking like that. Joe Almeida is looking ropes. Joe Almeida is looking uh, worse than me, that's for sure. Uh, Lenny Kemna ropes Quintana dead. I mean, no, Quintana's got dropped. Bilbao is dead, though. Pedro Bilbao is gone. It's going to be Lopez or Kemna or Almeida to try and make a late comeback at us. But realistically, I don't think anyone has the legs to do so today. We are on a different planet. We're on the Montes and Colan, and there, I don't know, um, on the Kreuzberg. Oh, that's, that was one hell of a shit comparison. And we're going to chill till the line 1.7 kilometer. The gap 2.14. Uh, I'm surprised that Almeida and Kemna aren't doing anything. Like, you lot have energy. <laughs> you lot have yellow. You can do something that isn't just sprinting. I, I think they might just be quite dumb. Uh, but Almeida's going to make a great operation. Kemna as well. Kemna is going to make a huge, huge move. But we are going to win at the summit of the Monte Zoncolan. And what a win it is. I mean, just, just take a bow and appreciate. We win at the Montes Colan. Right, we end up with 138 on Almeida and Kemna, who did decide to uh, up the rhythm towards the end. Uh, Lopez 205, Quintana 229, Bilbao 329. The gaps are quite massive. We've got Pete and Jai Henley five minutes behind. Um, no one withdrawing. Last place was Lassa Hassan for us. Uh, so we are far, well, first, sorry, and last. That's quite cool. GC wise, 314 on Joao Almeida and 537 on Nielsen Taules. Things are looking up for us as uh, next up we have another sprint stage, the penultimate stage of the episode between Pordenone and Marostica. Yet another good day for us, plus four. This fitness peak is really, really helping us out. Uh, um, but yeah, it's a sprint stage and despite a few hills towards the finish in, um, in Marostica, I don't think we'll be able to play for anything. Uh, maybe try to have a nice sprint. Uh, and fight, why not have us back in the box to try and get that points jersey? Uh, or even the tomorrow should be a stage that suits us more than today. And there's been a, an incident because there's only 21 riders left in the peloton. I don't know why or how. Also, why is Giacomo instead of the one pacing? Alright, there's way too many questions. I just saw that Larson from uh, Not My Team has DNF. Sinelobov is still there? Yep, of course he is. Classic. Uh, but yeah, 21 rider in this group. Uh, how far is the other group? It's not too far. I mean, it could definitely come back. But will it? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they might. Also, I'd love to be able to, uh, to use the Akomonizolo here. Because I'm going to have to pace until the, um, the hill here. We'll go around dynamic position and see what, uh, what on foot. Alright, we came back on the breakaway. The group behind hasn't come back yet. Uh, and we're in this slight hill. I'm gonna pace. Obviously, we're gonna pace. Because that's the best thing I can do right now. Try to see if uh, Sinerov gets used energy wise. Uh, I mean, he is starting to struggle for sure. Should I go for a little move? We're gonna cry and give. We're gonna, we're gonna get a little kick. Just a little kick on the summit of Rothina. Gap 13 seconds. What's happening behind him? Uh, David Ballerini is the one chasing us. That's fine. Acrobatic descent. Come on, don't crash. Don't crash. Don't crash, brother. Don't crash, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash, don't crash. We're gonna go back to effort. See, I'm, I'm not taking risks today. I'm not in the business of taking risks. 13 seconds is our gap. 16 as Joris Nuvenus is bringing everyone back together. You're a dickhead, Joris. You really are. 
I, I disliked you when I used my, uh, my, my uh, Sun Whip save, but I dislike you even more. 1.3k, we've started the sprint, everyone's coming back at us. Everyone is coming back at us, can we hold on till the line? Uh, yeah, we can. There we can. It's back-to-back -back wins, come on. Bonifatius third, then Joe Almeida, sorry, Bonifatius second, Almeida, Sinlebeuf, Clément Vauturini, with a very nice P5 for, uh, for the Frenchman. Uh, Ballerini, Paulus, Dumoulin, Lopez, Jacobson. I don't exactly know how and what happened in this stage. I'm going to need some... Uh, damn, I'm going to need to watch it back. Because clearly... Clearly I'm not smart enough to understand what's happened. And one the way, for the final stage of this Giro, it's a plus two for us today. Uh, between Marostica and the Alpe di Pampeago. Uh, I already made the intro once and then realised my mic was off because I'm a dickhead. Um, but yeah, um, can we go for a three-peat? I don't know, I'll see. Um, I'm hoping for, I'm hoping for it, but um, there hasn't been a single stage won by a breakaway so far, and with the riders, I'm seeing in the first group, the likes of Rubio, the likes of Edison, the likes of Attila Valta, or even Lorenzo Fortunato, who appears to be in quite a decent shape on this Giro. Um, I definitely feel like something could be possible for, uh, for a winning group. We'll see if the peloton paces, uh, and by the peloton, I do mean my team, uh, because my entire team is already at the front of the peloton. We'll see. Uh, but if we do win, we would be Six out of fourteen on this zero, nearly fifty percent of wins. That's that's a dub. We're midway through the first main climb of the day. This Basso Rolle, uh, just short of two thousand meter um, altitude wise, uh, but twenty k of climbing for an average of six point one percent. We're gonna stay at like high high heights today. Um, if that's if that's a thing. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna have nearly two thousand with the Basso Rolle. I'm gonna guess two thousands with the Path of IS. Um, and just on the 2000 with the Paso San Pellegrino um, and I'm pretty sure the final climb is yeah, it's way below that, the Alpe di Pampeago, but it's still a tough climb Gap 7 minutes with the breakaway, 7 minutes uh, with 72 kilometers left I mean 1 minute every 10 kilometer is usually what you get uh, but that's when the peloton paces also I haven't seen but Lutsenko has a plus 5 today, that's glorious Alright, this has been a bit of a, of a fight, uh, because a lot of riders have attacked the likes of Vlasov and Nero Quintana, um, mainly, uh, and there's, I mean, 36k to go, 2 minutes is the gap, but mainly there's only 12 riders left in the first group, as Nielsen Paulus is trying to go for a slight attack. Ruben Fernandez, I'm gonna guess, is in the new group, yes, he is indeed. Uh, has he taken, like, 32, 32? He, he nearly has taken 32 everywhere. Yeah, nice one, very nice one. 10k to go, we're gonna start the Alpe di Pampeago. Uh, we have full energy. Um, sadly, Lutsenko decided to stay in the group behind and never really attempted to come back. I don't exactly know what that's all about. But that's, that sounds quite dumb, if I'm being uh, awfully honest. What's the energy on, um, on Joao Meda? Yeah, it's somewhat better than mine. I can't really uh, be a dickhead today. Alright, that's good to know. Lopez has attacked. Okay, a lot of riders attacked. Okay, but there goes Joao Meda, so I can't, I can't let them go. I can't let them go. Uh, I was like, do I? But then I saw Joao Meda and I was like, I am not. Uh, Bilbao, Martinez, Paules, everyone's attacking. No one in this group cares? I'm gonna guess not. I'm gonna guess Nero Quintana doesn't really give a shit about being dropped despite being P5 in the GC. 3.5k to go, Joao Meda is just up the road. Uh, and he's got more energy than I do, which is uh, unfortunate. And we're in the very tough portion there, more than 15, 14%. Uh, we're nearing 15% actually gap. Mate, Joao Meda is destroying me right now. Uh, okay. It's not gonna be a 3 beat. Gap is now 1 minute, are you mad? 1.7k. Uh, and we may come back on this group, but we are not winning. Uh, who could win, actually? Uh, let's take a quick look. Who's got energy? Cepeda? Nah. Bilbao? Nah. Uh, I don't know, but not me. That's for sure. Maybe Lenny? Between Lenny and Joao, come on Lenny, come on, come on, come on, don't let Joao Almeida win. Lenny came as winner win today. Alright, uh, not how I thought the stage would go, uh, but I think, like, I, I mean, I paced in the past San Pellegrino. Uh, also, Lutsenko is dumb, and had he come back, knowing that he had a plus five, I would have done better. Much better. But it's a German win today to wrap up the episode. Joao Almeida P2, Tom Dumoulin, Alessandro Cepeda, Pierre Bilbao, and the pink jersey. Um, losing for the first time in the mountains today. We lose 29 seconds on uh, Lenny and Joao. All right, gap is now 2.45, with seven stages left. Uh, it'll start in the next episode with first a time trial between Merano and Bolsano, then 
Sprint between Arco and Pavia. Sprint between Salicetta and Mianasti. Mountain between Santuario Vitoforte and Chalane. Then Mountain again with Canelli, Cascata del Dolce. And that's gonna be a tough one. A very tough one. Because then we've got a heavy ish stage between Canobo and Cantu and to wrap it up, a flat, flat time trial of 32 kilometers. I mean, Joao is the better time trialist. He's by far the best in flats, but I'm the best in mountain. I have two opportunities to increase that gap and to win our first ever Grand Tour. That, nevertheless, is where we're going to wrap up this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, then please do leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of my content in the coming day, although um, not as regularly as I would hope so, then do feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't so already. But I will see you in the very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. Yeah. Pass me the funk. Get your funk on, girl.